It is Wednesday, my dude. How are you? Hello. Hi. We're going to play Magic the Gathering. Drafts in Zendikar all day. All day. That's what we're doing today. Before we do it, how are you doing? How are you? How are things? I didn't sleep very well at all last night. I had, I had actually... It's one of those nightmares that is kind of funny in retrospect, but at the time was horrifying. All right? I had an absolute screaming argument with someone. Like, top of the lungs, yelling kind of argument. Because they were making me go back to high school. And I didn't want to go back to high school. I have degrees, man. You can't make me go back to high school. Ah, oh, I was yelling about it. And then, in the dream, I discovered that I had live-streamed it all. Like, in my dream, I had accidentally live-streamed this fight. A streamer's worth nightmare. And in fact, uh, I talked to two of my friends this morning, both of whom stream. And when I used the phrase, I accidentally streamed it, that's a trigger word for anyone that's broadcast. That's a trigger. Immediately, if you say that to someone who streams, they're like, did you accidentally stream it? Right? They don't, they don't, like, the context goes out the window, just, holy shit, Sean. Is everything okay? Did you stream it? No, no, no. In in my dream, I believe that I had dream streamed it to the other dream viewers. And so I was uh, uh, trying to go on to various subreddits and see what people were saying about my meltdown. But because it was a dream, I just couldn't type on the keyboard because like my hands were made of noodles and all this shit. And I just remember, oh, I was just trying to type. I woke up at 5.30 and I was like, God, I'm not going back to bed. So I've been up for a while. We've been up for a while. We've been up for a bit. Um... So we're going to have kind of a chill day. I don't know if we're going to be able to make it all the way to 7. Whoops. I don't know if we're going to be able to make it all the way to 7 today, but yeah, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. We're going to do our best. I do want to show something off real fast here. Ding, do, 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 do. Let's do. Bam. Save changes. Bam. Here's our website. You can see here 30-day projects. Start again on October 15th. We're going to be talking about this at the start of most of the shows for the coming weeks. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to skip ahead. But the 30-day project idea is to take some ambitious project and crunch it down into a chunk of that project that you can complete in one month's time. A complete, you can complete in one month's time. Want to write a whole book? Write two chapters a week for four weeks in a row. Something like this. We're going to have more uh, information. I'm going to record a video probably after the stream today about, you know, some of the best practices and stuff in case some of you are, like, looking to get into it and want to have a little bit of guidance there. But you can sign up right here. You can uh, check out our Discord server here and see where your various uh, subject channel is. And because this is the fall, we tend to focus on creative projects in the fall. So the DK30 this time is focused on creative works. But you can feel free to do something non-creative, like if you just want to clean your house or, you know, start exercising, which are, are typical staples. All projects. All projects are welcome. All projects. But if you're looking for ideas, consider something creative. As part of that creative push, we are having a game jam. Game jam. And if you want to join a game jam team and are interested in filling out a form to get paired up, fill this out. Please fill it out sooner rather than later because there will be a cutoff time where we will close entrance to that. Um, obviously, because we don't want someone who's like, it's the day before. I want to join a game team. They're all closed or already formed. Ugh. And then the DK30 accountability buddy groups. This is uh, the idea of having little, little groups of similar interests joined together as a form of accountability-ness. If you're working on arts and crafts, maybe you connect with two other arts and crafts people, and you meet once a week to talk about what you're doing, because I always find it easier to work on a project if there's someone working alongside it next to me. Always feels good. Always feels good. So feel free to check that out. Go to the website day9.tv. Scroll down to events. Again, you open it and you scroll down to events. 30 day projects fall 2020. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Bam. Pow. Boom. And unmute. So I haven't done any Zendikar Drafts. Where is traditional draft Zendikar Rising? This is premier, premier draft. This is with other human beings, yes? Time drafts on other players, perfect. Oh. Whew. Actually, before I forget, let me, let me export my Jeskai list. Let me export this because I forgot to export it for my YouTube. So let me just paste this thing over here. Boom. Getting ready to go. I've done no drafts. This will be my first drafts, and I'm very excited because people have been speaking really high praise about it.
All right, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Look at that. Typing, 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 typing. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, oh, branch love pathway is so good. All right, so we see some of the juicy ones. King and Jerboa is a very nice pickup. Uh, Ruin Crab is just bullshit. I hate, I'm never going to draft a Ruin Crab. Well, Crablar has been ruining my life in standard. Thundering Rebuke is probably what we should take. This is so good. I don't actually think we need the pathway. I don't think we need the pathway. But Thundering Rebuke is just very, very, very good. Yeah, Ruin Crab I actually think is legitimately like a busted good card. You want me to draft a crab? You want me to hurt some people? I like the linearity of uh, Thundering Rebuke, though. Scale the heights. Play extra land, draw cards. Oh my god, this set is so good. We're going to get the rebuke here. Here's binding is good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I know, I'm picking Thundering Rebuke. Cleansing Wildfire is also a lot of fun. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I love this card a lot. Beginning of each player's upkeep, Roiling Vortex deals one damage to them. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, it deals five damage, but really that first part. This is a burn down mechanic. Spike Field Hazard, I think, is probably pretty good. I'll probably pick this one up. Creature draw a card. Relic Vial is. Hmm. This is a nice drain one. Smite the Monstrous is okay. Uh, my brain is operating a little slowly. Bubble snare is good re removal. I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the spike the spike field hazard. Drago visionary is okay. Three two that cycles is really good. It redraws, I guess I should say. It can trips. That's the word I'm looking for. Is cardboard live work with draft? Well, it's on. It's on. Anyone else seeing it work? Cinderclasm. Is this a deck that really wants a Cinderclasm? Cylindy Vision is also quite good. We're setting ourselves up nicely uh, for a uh, blue black wizards. Blue black wizards, blue red wizards. Alright. Prowling Felidar is very nice. Very, very, very nice. I think I think I will actually take the Prowling Felidar, even though I quite like Salindi Vision. Cinderclasm is okay. I, I I'm scared of blowing up all of my own shit though. I, I I like single target removal. I'm always leery about sweepers in draft because it's just so single targety. Ooh, Wind Rider Wizard. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, what? Wind Rider Wizard. I almost said Wild Rider Wizard. Alright, find a guy. This is okay. Cliff? Cliffhaven Kite Sail is actually quite nice. Prowling Felidar is nice. I don't like the white cards. I definitely hate Sizzling Barrage. This card fucking sucks. What's this? It's actually all right. It's actually an all right card. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna try it, try out the wizard. Instant sorcery or this? Oh yeah, song mad treachery. You love to see it. Perfect, 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 perfect card. Oh, there's also a relic amulet. We cast infant sorcery. Put a charge counter. You can tap and bop a thing. I might. Ooh. Yeah, I think I still am gonna take the song mad treachery. I would like to be firmly in red. Oh, Relic Amulet does seem fucking tight, man. You know, I okay, I, like my intuition is to take Song Mad Treachery, but I, you know what, fuck it. You know, I'm here to just have a good day. I'm here to have a good day. We're feeling like being a chili bear. Um, this is when it blocks, do stuff. This is not amazing. 
Oh shit, I meant to highlight it. Actually, no, I, I only clicked once. I hate when that happens so much. Um, inordinate rage. <laughs> God, I didn't even get the chance to look at it. I hate that. Molten Blast is a very okay card, but if I actually am wizards and I have some good flappers. Seafloor Stalker is actually fine. I clicked once, you bastard. Get inordinate rage, what happens when the interface screws your drafts is GVZ? Well, you know. This bug happens sufficiently often that I tend to be pretty careful about it. Um, Cascade Seer. Tormenting Voice is also really acceptable here. Scavenge Blade is also really acceptable here, but I, I think that I can get more Tormenting Voices, and, and you know, I would like some creatures. Spell Shield, great. All right. Defend my defend my baby wizards. Field research, terrific, 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 terrific. I mean, it's not an incredible card, but um, maybe I'd want one. I'll just keep it all. Ooh. By the way, I'm going to be very yawny today. I'm super low on sleep. You know, I, I'd even run one of this. <laughs> Excuse me. Cliffhaven Kite Sail is also okay, but, you know, I, I think when, when given the option. Huh. That's actually very, very good. Wow, we, 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 we got a very nice pack one, I think. Shatter Skull Charger, fuck yeah. Cunning Geyser Mage is also terrific. I'll click this to mark it. I'd be happy with any of these blue cards wheeling. Um, Core Blade Master is super cool. Palaka Predation is super cool. Isn't sorcery. Okay. This is just too good. My butt is okay, says Reminder what Kicker does. Uh, you can pay the Kicker cost in addition to the casting cost and get a little bonus. My butt is okay, says I could Google it, but I'm lazy. Don't think of it as being lazy. Think of it as being social. I love asking people stuff that I could Google. I love it. I absolutely love it. okay. We need some cheaper shit for sure. Prowling Felidar is probably not going to make it to the to the main deck. <laughs> um, this this card's good, but I'm not a warrior deck. Field research stinks. I mean, I think I just take this. I think I just take this. I think this pack sucks. Okay. How many kicked spells do we have? Ooh, Tazim Royal Mage seems very, very good. I like a lot of these. One kicker, two kicker, three kicker. I think I think I'm gonna get the roost. I think the roost is very, very good. I like the fling land. This is a good pack for us. This is a lot of wizards and a lot of spells. This this set does feel like incredibly convenient to just mush down a whole bunch of really good. Uh, I'll probably get the scorch rider to just do a whole bunch of really good three four color decks, maybe even five color decks, something like this. But uh, I, I just don't think I'm that good. I'm going to generally just favor Kicker. Fireblade Charger is okay.
Some very good warriors getting passed around here. I feel like this is going to wheel, right? Yeah, this is the one that I was going to pick. It just has good stats. I don't like the Fireblade Charger unless I'm in Boros. Alright, Fisher Wizard. Squid's pretty good, man. I gotta be honest with you. I, I like the squid, man. I want to be more aggressively positioned. I know, I know technically I want wizards, but like, dude. Fisher Wizard is an acceptably good wizard, though. You know, may, maybe I don't want double squid, you know. Well, let's get the Fisher Wizard and not try to rely on a defender for our damage dealing. Oh, yeah. Tazim Royal Mage. Nice. Kick it. Return instant sorcery from graveyard to hand. That seems great. That seems really, really great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seafloor Striker. Scavenged Blade. I don't know how to value equipment. I really don't. Because they automatically attach. All equipment since the dawn of time. Uh, I'm going to take this. Because I'm not going to run it. <laughs> Cunning Geyser Mage. Fuck yes. Oh my god. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm like way too happy to have gotten that to wheel. Relic Vile. Not another Relic Amulet. Alright, let's get another Expedition Champion. And just kind of figure our shit out later. We're going to want a cleansing wildfire, huh? Like this. Glacial grasp seems perfectly fine. This gate seer seems very mediocre. I knew you'd wheel. Ha 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 ha. Oh shit. No, no, I'm just gonna take the thundering rebuke. I mean, here he's good. I like I like Nahiri quite a bit. I'm also leaning forward like so hard. Oh, Arden Electromancer is perfect for us as well. But I mean, Thundering Rebuke is... I mean, this is just primo, 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 primo good. Uh, I would love the Cunning Geyser Mage to wheel. Rare draft time. Sorry, Roto Bagel. I just... I have a thousand, 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 thousand wild cards, Roto Bagel. <laughs> We didn't pick up any equipment. We have a scavenged blade, which I don't think is going to make it. Okay, Grotag Nightrunner. Um, oh my goodness. Into the Royal and Risen Riptide? Oh, I gotta get into the Royal and just hope no one takes Risen Riptide. Oh my god, this is so sick. But into the Royal is really good. This Roost of Drake. We have a lot of kick cards, man. Relic Amulet! Fuck yeah! Am I am I a newbie? Am I a newbie, man? Cause I think that this card's gonna be really good. Am I a newbie? I don't know if I'm gonna be a newbie. I don't know. It seems really tight. Well, there's an Arden Electromancer. There's also a Living Tempest, which is Flash Flying. Um, mm. Do I want Living Tempest or want Ardent Electromancer? Probably, probably this one. Three three Flash Flying is quite nice, I think. I think I actually have too much expensive shit, so I'm just gonna run this. Cunning Geyser Mage. Uh, yeah. Do I just run all the Cunning Geyser Mages? I'm gonna run the Cunning, cunning Geyser Mage. Thieving Skydiver. Yeah, I mean, we're getting the Skydiver for here, sure. I 
Anticognition actually seems pretty important for us. Really? Another Tazim Royal Mage? Is my deck insane? I also have a Bubble Snare. I'm gonna get the Bubble Snare. Holy shit, how many Cunning Geyser... W w am I ever not gonna run Cunning Geyser Mages? We gotta cut a lot of garbage from this high end. There it is. I think I just go Mass Geyser Mage. I think that's my build. Thank God! A deck of non-playables. Maybe. Welcome to the team. Living butthole. Look, it's a butthole with arms and eyes. <laughs> Thank God, we've no more no more playables. I picked the one whose art I liked more. Come on, this is some cool art. Uh, oh wait, this isn't the art that I thought it was. Big mistake, we're gonna lose. I mean, I think I think I just run like all these cunning guys or mages for sure. <laughs> Last pick, a Kumhau. Holy fuck! All right, I mean, we might run it. All right, so let's get out all the ones we're not a hundred thousand percent on. Let's let's get our spell land over here, and let's let's actually get rid of all of our land. And first, we're gonna we're gonna go in the opposite day nine order. As many of you know, I always do my land last, because that's like the smart way to do it. All right, you can't filter in draft, which doesn't make any sense at all. Terrific. I think we all know which mountain's coming down. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're definitely going to run more blue, but I, I, these are just placeholders for me. I know these numbers are incorrect, so don't, don't, don't at me, bro. Okay, so definitely running these. Maybe not. Yes. I think absolutely. Uh, super duper yes. Super duper yes. Super duper yes. No. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes to all three of these. Let's cut both of these. Let's cut this. Let's cut this. That's good. That's good. Let's cut both of these. I think we keep this. Okay, so let's turn off the land and see which things we have cut. Okay, so let's let's do some organization. Okay, so please make another pile. Thank you. Uh, so let's do our removally type things. I, I don't think I want to run this Molten Blast. I think I don't. This is removally. This is pricey removal. I mean, they, they are, there's a lot of instant sorcery speed, which is good. All right, which is which is good. All right, so we have some very nice early gamers. Yeah, actually, I mean, this is why I should not run the Molten um, Molten Blast. It can destroy an artifact, and it can deal a little damage. But, I mean, we have the Thieving Skydiver, so we can just take control of it, right? Um, a lot of these are going to be terrific. I think this is okay. This is fine. This is amazing. Flash Flyer seems nice. I think that I can also cut... Uh, we can also cut some lands here, right? Alright, like, I, I mean, this Akum Warrior is just upside, right? Oh, we're pretty aggressive. I think it's actually fine. Um, so then, what would I therefore want to put in? I, I think I actually do want this spell shield. It does feel pretty pretty tight. I think uh, field research also seems good. Probably don't want a ton of them.
13 creatures. 13 creatures, but in a way, 14. Which, which feels like about right. Do we glacial grasp someone? Like, how do we win? Trestout says, Hi, stupid question. In terms of MTGA arena land draw system, does it count to flip lands as a land in the calculation? That's a great question. 15 lands, so I have 8 and 7 here, so it looks like no. It looks like it's counting these as the front-facing side of them. I mean, this is, like, so clearly going to be Scry 1. I think I'm actually going to run a Glacial Grasp is kind of where I'm at. Because if I look at this, the curve is, is quite nice, right? Like, because we do play Relic Amulets on turn 2. Oh, God. Oh, I think I'll run both Field Research and, and Glacial Grasp. Yeah, I think this is fine. Now, are we really missing anything great? I mean, we are essentially the most annoying deck possible. There is a candidate also for Anticognition to be run, because this, this could be a very nice... Very nice late game one. Is Scorch Rider better than Cascade Seer? That's a great question. Let's investigate that. You know, the question is, do we want to focus more on the Roost of Drakes, or do we want to focus more on the Relic Amulet? Well, that's not the question, but that's a question I'm asking myself. And that's why I'm going to lean towards the Cascades here, because I think that we're a little bit more defensive. We like having more Wizards out to proc the Relic Amulet, and Scrying does seem pretty valuable, because, you know, I, I have a lot of delay and deny, right? Um, do I want a Spell Shield, or would I prefer an Anticognition? Well, it does kick. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm. I don't like drawing this late. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty content with this. What do we think about eight seven? Does eight seven feel good to us? I think it does. We don't have any double blue cost, anywhere. We do have double red, so even though it's kind of like eight nine, um. This is a valuable, excuse me, this is a valuable removal spell. No Akum, though? No, no, I don't think the uh, Akum Hellhound makes sense in our deck. Because, I mean, look, look at how I'm going to be playing. Like, I can actually rearrange this in sort of the order that I, I will be playing in. So let's let's move some of these removals. When, when am I going to be playing removals? Pretty early. We're going to be playing a lot of our kicked things, potentially later, like the Tazim Royal Mage. Six, so we can put this in the later, right? Into the Royal is a little bit of a defensive one. This is defensive, defensive, good. So, I mean, oops. If I really am looking at this, we have a lot of just, like, denial stuff early and a lot of powerful stuff late. Let me actually just go back to the deck and see if it rearranges it for me. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, like, the curve looks very smooth. But, we, I mean, we basically uh, are someone that tries to gradually build up board state and value, and then we can just start bouncing things like crazy. crazy. Oh. <sighs> yeah, Phoebus, I think Inordinate Rage is another card that is a consideration for the for the list. This is fine. I think this is fine. Trust out this first card in draft is Nissa. Looks like a good day. And I love that you came here to type that first. take this damage here. Perfect. Royal 
doing regrowth is like not a big deal. I don't want to play the relic amulet right now. Okay, so. There is a phase between main and combat called pre-combat. So if I click this, we're in pre-combat. So it's after the main phase. So this means that I can cast Glacial Grasp on the Brushfire Elemental right now. Well, this is, this is a pile of shit for sure. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the Wind Rider. I mean, we're gonna take some damage here. These are two just very very good good cards. <laughs> Missing our land was a good bit painful. card. Why is Living Tempest, honestly? Villain's deck looks incredible as well. Like, very incredible. Crystal Brand is like destroying us, man. Uh oh. Alright, so. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. You got it. He's got it. It's his. It's fine. You know, 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 you know. I think I'm going to put an anti-cognition. I think I am. Oh, don't go to decks. Where's my back button? This this was a card that I was a little on the fence on. This uh, spell shield. Try anti-cognition instead. Little bit more that other one. Because I think I think I'm actually okay to lose a lot of my wizards. A lot of my wizards have like enter the battlefield effects. Alright, hold on. My phone wants to update. And I, I just want everyone to be happy, including my phone. Casual Zars, is there any chance we get to see you in an Among Us lobby at some point? You know, I don't even know how that game works, but my understanding is that it is werewolf in space. Yeah, I think maybe I needed to drop that relic amulet a little sooner. I'm certainly not as not as experienced as I used to be. I mean, this is nice. We have thundering the dude. Yeah, because those werewolf games to me are like um, werewolf is a game that has always felt like um, when your party turns into oh now well, let's watch this YouTube video, and that's when you know the party's gonna wrap up in 45 minutes. Try to anti-cognition something. Rush Nalice is it's Space Station 13 reduced to a playable game. Oh yeah. Oh yeah.
easiest kicker of my life. Like, the Social Deception games are... I feel like... So, like, okay. I'm gonna just make a statement that is already coming true, but I, I'm gonna shamelessly... Alright, that's my camera's not... Quite, there we go. There we go. Now I can wiggle my hands in a normal way. Jesus. Holy shit. Okay, I want someone to back me up on the fact that I did say this a while ago. I did say this a while ago. Maybe a year ago. That board games are beautiful in how they leverage systems, social interaction, and all sorts of other human stuff like the need for, you know, conversation and shit. Oh, you want a bubble snare? A drake? You got it, man. Kick it. Oh, shit. I said that. And then I said that when we get to, um... As time goes on, I bet you that people will take concepts from board games and turn them into digital games. And the examples I used were Hearthstone was one of the first big steps for this. Showcasing how all card game stuff could be super duper amped up. Oh, shoot. Shoot shit. Okay. What can you do? I said it was going to be super amped up. Talked about this with Monster Train. I talked about this, damn it. Um, yeah, I think that the board games have really, particularly German style board games, have explored a lot of really good concepts. I think this is a better thing to do here. Why is this? That's fine. I mean, this is so. This is so stupid. Um, but yeah, I mean, like German-style board games, and a lot of board games have had to explore how do we make a game with no content? Because like, you can't make an open-world board game. There's just literally not. And you just keep moving the tile around. You keep wandering and stretching, you know. And I, there, there was this uh, board game that I played called Arabian Nights that tried to do this, where it's like, it's a storytelling game, and here's an encyclopedia, and you flip to the page, and you read the sentence. It's so much easier to have a digital game, where it just prints, here's what happened. You know what I mean? Fuck it. Yeah. Reach and haste? Oh, that's that's pretty bad, reach and haste, huh? Well, we will chump here. Oh, well, I gotta wait. talk about this soon. I'll talk about this super, super spin. Scry 2 draw? Okay. Because this is just target creature, yeah. I actually do have to do this. No, it's, al it's almost working, but it's not, like, quite working. Okay, this is, this is terrific. Take it. Shit. 
Jesus. Oh my god, these support cards freaking rule, man. Oh my god, this is really insane. These support cards are tight! I mean, this is so cool. I mean, this is so fun. Look, I'm gonna talk about this board game shit. We're gonna talk about... Uh, by the way, I think um, some of you may see the news, some of you may not have. Uh, Mike Morheim, who is awesome, uh, has created a new studio. Mike Morheim of uh, Blizzard Entertainment fame. has created a company called Dreamhaven. It has two studios. With a whole bunch of just literally... Wh wh what's the opposite of no-name? A bunch of so-name people. Dustin Browder's on one of them. Jason Chase from Hearthstone. Um, Chris Sigety from... Uh, Everything. <laughs> Big name. No, I like I like no names and so names. It's just a bunch of so name people, man. Like some just the power hottest games. Eric Dodds, who created Hearthstone. <gasps> Fixed. Um, they are absolutely so named. Um, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about Bethesda acquiring Zenimax. We'll talk. We'll talk about all these things. We'll talk about all these things today. We're a little slow and. Uh, I don't know why I'm grouping we. I'm a little slow. You're smart, fast, and have the entire internet at your fingertips. I'm merely a clown who's clowny in a way for profit. <laughs> uh, yeah, by the way, uh, Zenimax owns Bethesda, ID Software, um, so you get, like, your Wolfensteins. They also, uh, Arcane Studios, isn't that right? Arcane that does um, Dishonored. Anything that's first person and good is now owned by Microsoft, which is terrific. Um... Anyways. Tom Critter says this is the first draft of the day. It's the first draft of all time in this set for me that anyone's ever had. No one has ever drafted until me today. <laughs> I, uh, I had a rough time sleeping last night. Rough time. Had had nightmares that I had a fight and accidentally streamed it. It was horrifying. But yeah, no, I feel like there's all this brilliant goodness that's been in German-style board games. German-style board games is a type of board game that came, believe it or not, from a lot of games made in Germany, that uh, have a lot of principles that have sort of percolated throughout. Games where all players are in towards the... Um, all players stay in until the end. So, for instance, in Settlers of Catan, whenever someone hits 10 points... The game stops, and that person is declared the winner. Everyone stayed in until 10 points was hit. This is the opposite from Monopoly, where people go bankrupt one at a time. Um, they're often way less about conflict and much more about negotiation. There's lots of trading. There's lots of like social elements to the gameplay. Like For instance, uh, you know, if you look at Settlers of Catan, it says, um, roll the dice, trade, build. And trade, on text, is just, you know... You have, do whatever you want and just trade. Any trade is fine. You know, and, and like that sort of social thing, there's just so much richness there. And you can read about German style board games. They tend to award points for for things and there's accumulation of points throughout. There's, there's a whole lot of elements. Um, there's a whole lot of elements to, um, to that. Dur70 says, why not say Euro? It's a little limited to say German. That's just, that's just what it's called. You know what I mean? Is this good? Okay. I'm gonna keep it. We have two relic amulets. It's very slow. Dur7y says, it's dirty. Referring to the pronunciation of their name, as opposed to my answer. <laughs> Day 9's answer is a really dirty answer. Now, okay, so we see these colors. Um, Go greedy or go home, I say. Why well, Sangrick SC is generally the hobby uh, has been moving towards calling them Euro uh, rather than German. Oh, that's fantastic then. Terrific, terrific. We're gonna go ahead and pass because I want to be able to anti cognition the next the next thing that is played, such as the territorial sky cat, which is a really good one to get. Like holy fuck. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, I have heard the term designer board games, which is just a deliciously arrogant one. That's so good. Designer board games. <laughs> designer board games. So... I mean, you can't you can't expect me not to chuckle when that is spaken. I'm gonna go ahead and re rebuke thunderingly. But yeah, so uh, the artist formerly known as German Board Games that uh, is turning to Euro Board Games. There is a lot of um, there's just been a lot of brilliant and wondrous exploration into. Play the squid. So on and so forth. Um, there's all these really great principles and really great elements. I think the biggest thing of all that has been part of the explosion of board games is the exploration of system-driven gameplay as opposed to content-driven gameplay. Content-driven gameplay is like, we have ten levels, let's add ten more. We have an eight-hour single-player, let's add a two-hour DLC. We have a 10 kilometer uh, by 10 kilometer world, let's go 20 by 20 and call us Battleist Royale. You know what I mean? Turn a lane to its own hand. Scraw! And those systems are heavily limited by the fact that it is physical. For instance, most card games that involve physical cards, like Magic, you don't keep track of what the each unit's health is. Because if you did, you would run out of brain. You know, because we're winning... I want to make sure, uh, uh, excuse me, we're generally in a good position. I just want to make sure that I don't wind up falling behind on board. So I'm going to uh, field research to build up these kickers, get myself refilled. So on and so forth. Yeah, it, it's really actually hard to keep track of all the health of everything. That's why in Magic, it just goes away at the end of the turn. It just goes away at the end of the turn. And it's it's all good. It's actually all great. Um, but then when you have digital, you can do things like what Hearthstone does, where you have persistent tracking on all the health. It's like really amazing how it works. I actually downright call it incroyable. These relic amulets are bullshit good. I love these. And the thing is, with digital products, you can basically take the same system-driven ideas from a lot of recent designer board games, and you can extend those in just brilliant ways. And it's really exciting to see a lot of different titles explore different elements of existing board games. I think it's incredible. Um, I think it's just absolutely incredible to see games like Monster Train come up. I think Monster Train is just fantastic. I mean, I have, like, little fiddly issues with it. But, like, conceptually, Monster Train is just a brilliant, amazing game. Slay the Spire. Oh, my God. Created by divine beings. Created by absolutely divine beings, man. I think the Mega Crit guy is fucking spectacular. Victus says, how do you feel about Dominion if you've played it? Love Dominion. I've played a metric shitload of Dominion. That might even be one of like my top top ten most played games. Yeah, you updated. Fuck off. I get it. I know. You updated. Continue. Alright, restart. I just I restarted a hundred times. What the hell? But I think that Among Us is kind of in that ugh, in that um in that camp. Where Among Us basically goes, dude, werewolf's good. How do we just amp this up with the digital component to it? The thing that does surprise me about uh, Among Us is the following. 
Well, okay, it, it, it both surprises me, but doesn't surprise me. The game is for four to ten players, right? That's a lot of players, man. I can cast none of my spells, except for one, so I'm going to go ahead and chuck it. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna put the the card that returns itself to my hand away. Archpriestal of Iona. All right, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass. We're gonna try to anti cognition, so that way the next card that comes down can possibly be thunderingly rebuked a little more easily. But like Among Us is four to ten players, and it, it gets better around, like, you know, eight. And eight is a lot of people to organize for a game. And there's been sort of a, a long-held <clears throat> sense that you got to be careful if you have a game that requires too many people to play. All right, we're definitely passing through. Taking one damage a turn is absolutely fine. We want to hit a really good anti-cognition. That is a really good anti-cognition. Chill, I see no reason to do anything right now. Um, yeah, there's a sense of, like, dude, you really don't want to, like, put too many players in a game, because then you can kind of screw yourself. Because then, like, no one can play it, right? If you need ten players to play a game, it's terrible. It's so bad. Alright, now, now we're cooking with portals. But I, I'm just so amazed that Among Us has done so profoundly well. So profoundly well. Like, it, it's not just that it's done well. It's done, like, fucking insanely well. I just did not realize that there would be that many people to invite into a game. You know, for, for most. Turns out I'm a little bit fucking wrong. Okay. Okay, so we're going to play this. Now, I think I want to hold on to the Tazim Royal Mage, but I'm going to chuck a Cunning Geyser Mage, because I really... Well... Alright, let's play it normal style. It is a wizard. So if I draw a land, I can play the Wind Rider Wizard, and then I can uh, delete this. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, the destroyed target artifact text is relevant! Oh, fuck! Oh! <laughs> oh! Whoa! Uh, all right. All right, let's play the Wind Rider Wizard. Shit. Did I say Millennium Bloom? Doesn't matter, man. We got it. We, 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 we might not be long for this world. But, I mean, if I get another land, I can flash in the flying butthole. <laughs> we still got some turns. No blocks. Commence Operation Bonk. I wonder how long the Among Us trajectory will, will occur. I really wonder. You know, I, I'm just delighted whenever some of the back-looking analysis in the games industry just gets blown out of the water. I love this. And here's what I mean by back-looking analysis. Hey, that game's a battle royale. We should make a battle royale. Hey, 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 World of Warcraft. MMOs are big. We should make an MMO. Wait, hey, hey. Hey, auto-battlers are a thing. We should make an auto-battler, right? It just takes the, the thing that just worked. Let's do it again. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Shit. Everybody. Bing.
Glacial Grasp will do just fine. <sighs> Journey to Oblivion is going to exile target non-land permanent until it leaves the battlefield. You got it. So, you know, all else being equal, Grandolf the Great and Gandalf the White, Monty Fun and the Holy Grail's Black Knight. All right, well, this will still do fine. Uh, okay, I'm doing this now. I'm gonna do this now. I think that seems good. While villain is tapped out, no more protection spells. Yeah, this is the ultimate showdown of ultimate destiny. Good guys, bad guys, and explosions. As far as the eye can see, and only one will survive. I wonder who it will be. This is the ultimate showdown. Ultimate destiny. <laughs> How, dude, let me tell you, I'm here for the old memes, man. Yeah, man. You know, I, I just love whenever this back-looking garbage just gets, like, deleted. It feels so good. Well, that was close. <laughs> that was really close. That was a very close thing. Uh, I mean... Oh, it's equipped, too? Oh, yeah, we're fucking dead, man. Gandalf the Great opening up the stream. Oh, missing the play! Just equip to this and kill me. Woohoo! All right, nice. You love to see it. Well... Fuck. Well, you know, we threw a game yesterday. Opponent throws back to us. Matchmaking works. But yeah, no, I mean, like, because I... Uh, here's the thing that I really... Um, here's the thing I really don't like about a lot of the back-looking stuff that I'm referring to is, like, I I'm being a little bit facetious when I say it because analysis of markets and trends is great. It's fantastic. I like zombies. I don't care if your zombie movie is garbage. I will enjoy your zombie movie, okay? And if you ask me which ones I've seen, I don't know. I type in zombies to Netflix, and I open things up, and I consume it till the end, and I go, <laughs> what a garbage movie. And then I watch another zombie movie. I like zombies. And if someone was doing some market analysis and went, holy butts, zombies are in. And our analysis shows that this is working, let's make some zombie stuff. That's fine. I, I think there's nothing actually, like, fundamentally bad about that. Train to Busan was an incredible movie, The Bam Effect. It's too bad they never made a sequel. <laughs> Dead Set is a really good, sort of... It's a little bit more niche. This is, uh, no, it's just a flying life locker. Does he royal mage? Oh, you maybe... Oh, I played the wrong fucking land. Oh my god. Alright, we'll pass. It's fine. Kingdom, kingdom is spectacular. Kingdom is spooktacular. Orange. You know what? I'm gonna play this idiot. Anyways. So when it, when it comes to like back looking analysis, like, terrific. Great. Good. Cool. Oh shit, that is a good ass card. Hello, my squid would like to have a word with you. Villain probably thinks I just drew blue. <laughs> but like the problem I have with this back looking analysis is that at the end of the day, what a lot of people are looking for is a well crafted good product. And a lot of what makes the product good are things relative to very similar instance or very similar versions of itself. Uh, how do we want to do this? We have a Tazim Royal Mage. I think this is fine. This is, uh... Should 
shock in the flapper. Personality says, holy shit, Peninsula did that bad. No, Peninsula is actually a fine movie. It's a zombie movie. I thought it was terrific. Uh, but, but like, uh, what, people want a good product. Like, fantasy was not... Oh my god. Fantasy was not a hugely big genre. And then you have something amazing, like Game of Thrones comes out. The book I'm talking about. Sells, like, insanely. Paranormal romance was, like, not a thing. And then Twilight came out. And they invented a genre named for that shit, as it were. We're going to be on the defense. We're going to need a Tazim Royal Mage to get uh, this thing back. MMOs? You know, like, Ultima Online was a big thing. But, like, World of Warcraft just came out and just knocked everything out of the way. It was insane, you know? I just like when a product comes out and it's just really, really good. Have you seen the recent zombie movie film Alive? I have not. I have not. I did see, um... It was something station. I can't, I can't remember it. Two in the bin. I'll kick it. Something station. Something station animated movie. Station zombie movie. Oh my god. Station zombie movie. Soul station. Good lord. And even as I'm reading that title right now, I'm like, I don't know if that was correct. All right, Bert 232, it's looking good. Yeah, I just, I just really like really well-made products, man. That you play it and it's just like, oh my god, the like like um, Ghost of Tsushima. I am I am like anti-interested in open-world games. I have watched tons of gameplay footage of Ghost of Tsushima because like. The degree of polish and care and nuance and subtlety in that movie, in that game, is just, it's so good. It feels like transcendent almost, you know? 2K. Yes. Get in there, ye living tempest. Like, again, I'm not into open world games generally as like a genre I'm not interested in that as a genre but like holy shit holy shit because the Tsushima looks incredible like I, I genuinely am probably going to install and play it at some point now, as long as brrr doesn't gain any life we can just thundering the book Why? What? Why? Be more constructive with your feedback. Does this buff something? Sympa problem. Terrific. Um. Is this actually going to be that much of an issue, or is the attended healer going to be the issue? I think that... I think, we, I think I actually bonk this. Air resolves. It needs double blue? Oh, fuck! Well, I think, you know, I think we're doing okay. If villain plays something with all that mana, we can precog it. Yeah. Or anti cog it. The Cyberpunk 2077 counts open world? It could. It could Anami Moose. It could Anami Moose. Core Celebrant. Okay. Gains tons of life. Life, life, life. It's amazing. Just like so much life. 
I think I think it's okay to ignore this as long as I can get my relic amulet all big and my roost of drakes kicked. Ooh, you love to see it. You hate to see it. I think I'm still okay. I think I'm still okay. Maurice says, I feel differently about Cyberpunk being open world because it sounds like it might actually be pretty dense and varied. Yeah, I mean, here, here's the problem I have with open world games. I can actually describe it pretty plainly. Here, here's what I don't like about an open world game. Here is a vast and boring nothing. It has trees, it has lakes, there's rivers and animals and nothing to do. There's no compelling level of design, no interesting dimensionality to anything. The hills go up, the hills go down, you can go everywhere. And then we thunk, here's a city, thunk, fucking cave, boom! Rogues live in tents and they attack you. Ship the product, right? Like, and, and there's nothing, I think, fundamentally bad about that experience because it is kind of fun to just like get in a car and just drive around and enjoy yourself I am absolutely going to do this now look like I mean I just I, I cannot even stress to you the the degree to which I, I just yearn for designed experiences. I like designed experiences. I like, for instance, in Dark Souls, the interesting, twisted, gnarly interconnectedness of the Undead Berg. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love just knowing exactly how that layout works and having, oh, and I'm going to walk across this. Oh, there's dudes who are throwing uh, firebombs, and that's interesting. And do you know that if you like work your way through here, it connects back to that? Ooh. I like in Mario games, how when you're like platforming through the level, you can like feel the design of the escalation of difficulty. All right, we, we are we're very clearly winning. Like we're in a dominant position. We can't do much, but soon enough. Um, and that's not to say that there is it is impossible to make an open world game in which I would be interested, but it feels like. A vast expanse of lack of design rather than an actually interesting crafted space and I mean like I like stories I read as much as your next nerd I'm under no pressure to do anything at all this is terrific Seven in the bin, rats. Kaboom! This real amulet is very, 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 very good. Because, like, okay, so here, like, when I played Fallout New Vegas, which is an open-world game that I actually quite liked, I just felt like I could let my brain wander, and there was really densely interesting things happening kind of all over the place, and that was cool. Was it the tightest, raddest collection of open spaces I've ever seen? Um, you know, it, it, it wore, wore its... wore out in terms of, like, level design. Sure. This guy starts swinging, man. I'm just gonna bounce it. <laughs> I knew getting this flash flyer was a good idea. I'm fucking smart. But, um. Hollow Knight, to me, sensational exploration. Just sensational. Loved it. Loved the exploration in it so much. I, I am with near certainty running Blue Lands. I have to adjust the uh, values of these because I forgot that I had so many double blue. 
you'll even recall I went, oh yeah, no, we don't even have any double blue, so it's perfect. Diddymon says, I think his mentality shows up in how you stream. It's very content-driven and hardly ever feels meandering. That is the sweetest thing that I have heard in years, because I feel so meandering lately. <laughs> when I say lately, I mean for the last several years. Are there actually eight cards in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Terrific. Absolutely anti-cognition. Bam. Boom. Oh, yeah. Oh, please leave them both on top. Oh. Oh. Knockout 92 says, what about games like GTA 5? Actually, this is a really great example of how my statement about open world is more of a taste thing and less of like a... This is a procedurally terrible thing. Like, GTA 5 is brilliant. I mean, that thing is absolutely brilliant. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. I, I, I made a mistake. I, I should have... I, I needed to leave up into the royal. Ah, oh, this double blue shit is just ruining me. I mean, it's it's essentially impossible to lose, but. No! Don't touch it. You don't know where it's been. All right, whatever. You know what? We made a mistake. What's new, huh? Ooh, yeah, my squid's gonna be coming in at ya. Dude, our goal of just delay until we win with flyers, it's just, it's all coming real. It just, feel, it just feels so incredible. Now, do I want to kick this thing back right now? I think, yeah, let's actually do this. Let's, let's kick this with the Cunning Geyser Mage. Bing bong. Like, GTA V is brilliant, and it's so fun because you have context for how the real world operates, right? So then all of a sudden you just start, like, getting to have some fun by, like, driving in the opposite lane of traffic, right? Like, you can, you can dive off a bridge. It's funny. It's fun. It's cool, right? X is the number of creatures in your party. Cleric, cleric, rogue, rogue. All right. Cat. Alright, who do you want me to kill? You got it, man. So sick. So unbelievably sick. When I played the GTA games, I mean, I was really amazed. I, I mean, it's just it's just a marvel how outstanding the engineering is. I mean, just really, truly a marvel to behold. But, like, still, you know, I'm just driving around city streets. There's only so many ways that streets can connect to each other to make them feel, like, meaningfully different for me. Right? So I'm just sort of like, eh, whatever. I get very like, oh, this is really an amazing technical achievement. Okay, cool. I'd rather play a design game like Hollow Knight. And this is why I think that with uh, Cyberpunk 2077, my understanding is that there's just a lot of density of experience. Who do you want me to heal? Dude, look, 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 at our, look at our incredible patience with our just like wizarding wonder. Please, I insist. Bye. Um. 
It's amazing how this deck really picks up when you actually have enough resources. Alright, let's just get this one out of the way. Talk about an all-star card. Like, what the hell? This deck is really fun. I can't believe it. Can't, I can't believe how good this drafting feels. Because, like, I, I, I keep going, like, my deck's broken, and then I play against other people, and I'm like, both of our decks are broken, man. We need one more island, one less mountain, huh? Wait. Eight is still a lot. Ah, I feel like I'm gonna regret this. Whatever. Chainsaw 042 says, Your issues with open world games seem to mirror my issues with roguelikes, shallow in terms of lacking density of designed experiences. Yes, 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 yes. I actually kind of have a big spread. Roguelike is a genre that I've played a, a lot of. I'm just sort of interested in it because uh, roguelikes to me feel like another version of um, what I was talking about earlier. Games that use board gaminess. Games that use board gaminess and system design is sort of like a core tenet to what they're doing, only in theaters. So I, I'm like really fascinated by them as a genre experience, but like, yeah, sometimes I'll play a roguelike and just be like bored out of my mind at some point. I mean, bored out of my mind is maybe a strong, strong statement, but like Noida. Noida really excited me with kind of like how the environments function and how they just seem highly reactive. Oh my god, it was so cool. The Falcon. I mean, they just seem so cool, you know. But then, uh, you know, the it, it just kind of felt very um, undesigned at some point. The procedural ness of the existing areas were a little bit eh. Marie says I used to play quite a bit of roguelikes, but I can't. That's fine. But I can't commit to them for long enough anymore to fully experience all they have to offer and just move on. Yeah. What does this thing do? Put a stop here because we're probably going to glacial grasp. I really would love to get to an additional manas. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm gonna do this now because I mean I really want to get this this mana. Okay, Cascade Seer is still pretty fine though. Oh, Spelunky too is a road like that. Really, I just need to play the hell out of it. I need to just play the hell out of it. I'm gonna do this to this one because I tapped the wrong land, and that's fine. I should have kicked this one out. Ah. Just hunting for hunting for hunting for Landos. Hunting for Landos. Once I can start cunning geyser maging, this is gonna be very sick. Still enjoying Hades. Hades seems really good. Oh me oh my. That could be quite a bother. 
All right. Thank goodness. Okay. Okay. Getting close. Almost there. Cunning Geyser Mage to bounce the Territorial Scythe Cat is really nice. Thumper TV says, Sean, what are some games that you've streamed on your channel that really stood out or are games you wish to have finished? My personal favorite is your Subnautica stream. I think Subnautica is the one of most, one of the most brilliant games ever made. It's just too scary for me. Just too scary for me. Um... You know, it's interesting. I really have broadened my gaming horizons here on the show starting in 2012. I just started to stream all my new gameplay experiences here. Damn, you've bitten me. Taking five years, okay. Especially if I can draw a land! Yes! Oh my god, kick it! Woo! Woo! Get thee gone! Alright, now we can start cooking with plasma. Oh, Jukebox TV says, I'm still in denial. I keep expecting my little baby cat to come up and brush up against my leg or hop on the desk and beg for treats. It's really hard to lose a little furry friend, man. Losing an animal sucks. Oh, man. It's happened to a lot of people here. It happened to me as a kid, oh, man. It wasn't even my cat. It was a neighborhood cat. Orange cat by the name of Ozzy. Really sweet cat. This is, you know, but this is one of the... This is one of our goals here. Uh, okay. One of our big goals here is just have a place where people can go and hang out and chill. Get a little bit of escape from stress, you know what I mean? Because believe me, when I'm not streaming, there's plenty of things that can stress me out. But when we're all here, we got really a night. Get really nice, comfortable. Oh, oh I, I can kill that. No problem. I think we just continue to put on the pressure. Tap it. deck is fun as hell. What are some other really good games we've played on? What are, that we've played here? You know, even though it also scared the shit out of me, I think Amnesia Dark Descent is one of the greatest games ever made. Um, Antichamber was a real favorite of mine. Slay the Spire recently. Factorio is one of my favorite games I've played in years. I mean, just an absolute masterpiece of a game. Souls games really loved. Outer Wilds, probably game of the year. Stardew Valley's really good. Got Gosh, there, there's some other... There were a lot of games that were played... In 2013, 14, 15, and 16 that I thought were really marvelous. Five and one, having fun. Astroneer. You know, Chunky Spaceman, I... I feel like Astroneer was a really good eight hours. And then I kind of felt like it just kind of fizzled for me. Uh, what, do I, what do I even think about this? We have the field research in hand. Opponent goes first. We do have three land with the Akum Warrior. Okay. On Hunix says, have you played any Bioshock games on stream that I don't recall? I did play uh, Bio or Bioshock Infinity. Bioshock Infinite, Jesus. 
I said it and I was like, something's wrong. <laughs> Something is incorrect. Oh my god, the Viper has just raided us with a party of 3,000! Party of 3,000! Oh my god, for any of you who don't know, the Viper is... I mean, I don't know what the literal current ratings are, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna absolutely pump up the Viper. The Viper is like the greatest Age of Empires two player of all time. Just absolutely out of control at AOE two. Like to the point where you're just like, "Fuck, he's so good." Um, I was uh, actually the Viper is the reason that I chose to start streaming some Age of Empires two earlier on this year because there's a lovely fellow by the name of uh, Tobias. You know who you are, Tobias. And uh, we were having lunch one day, and I said, Dude, Tobias, are there any streamers that you'd... Oh, that's a good one. That's a very good one. Are there any streamers that you'd recommend? You know, what have you been watching on stream lately? And without hesitating, Tobias goes, The Viper. I'm like, who's the Viper? So the Viper's an AoE2 uh, player. And just, and, and, and just, it's been a long time explained to me just how crazy upscaling um, Age of Empires is in terms of economy when compared to StarCraft. I think I into the Royal this now because it's a four cost card and we want to make sure that we maintain a tempo advantage because if we can actually get to six land, I think we're in good shape. But yeah, um, Age of Empires 2 really contrasts with StarCraft in that StarCraft has discrete bases and the difficulty of taking and holding a base limits how, mu how many workers you can get and also your supply count um, limits a little bit of how you compose yourself. Do I shoot this, or do I sack? No, I think I just shoot this. This is, I think, a perfectly fine play. I'm gonna do it on my turn, because my opponent is blue-red, so I wanna make sure that that's just... I should get that one out. Oh my god, the Viper just subscribed. Oh, the Viper just subscribed! The Viper just... Oh my god! Oh, be cool, be cool. But yeah, in Age of Empires 2, basically resources are kind of evenly distributed everywhere, and defense is much, 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 much stronger in the game. For instance, in, uh, you have a town hall, and all your workers can basically drop off stuff that they're collecting to it, and you can load workers into the town hall, and they shoot out of it. So it's kind of like workers can defend themselves. So the the kind of Age of Empires 2 feels very decentralized and very just insanely upscaling in terms of economy compared to StarCraft. And I was like, oh man, Toby, that sounds like really interesting. So Tobias recommended... Um, Do I Geyser Mage here? You know, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to trade away my Living Tempest on this dude. I started watching the Viper, and I mean, it was, it was super, 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 super sick. Watching the Viper just manage... I mean, it's, it's kind of fascinating, because... In, in a lot of RTS games, there's the mini-game of you with your base, and then there's the mini-game of you against the other person, and the management of the self-mini-game in AoE 2, which is like, my economy, how do I make sure that I'm not getting too much of this resource, but I'm also getting enough of that resource to be able to XYZ. Uh, do I want to kill the Cascades here? Feels incredibly inefficient. Yeah, Jimmy, seeing, seeing the insane management of, like, the... Do I... Am I making sure I'm generating enough? Because there's four... Or five resources in Age of Empires 2. There's basically meat, wood, gold, stone, and you have a supply count. So, I mean, there's just a whole lot of them getting enough of this to be able to send to this and be able to send to that and be able to twist back around in this way. I mean, like, the StarCraft is remarkably streamlined for an RTS game in terms of its uh, economic function. So, I mean, just the management of that self-game was... I mean, it was just incredible to watch. It was, like, really, really, really incredible to watch. Now that I have the big spiky threat out of the way, I think I'm comfortable enough to card draw my way through. EK Hawkman says, meat. Yeah, I, I'm using meat as a uh, sort of... If someone who plays AoE 2 knows what I'm talking about, they'll be like, oh yeah, I see what Sean's saying. What just happened? My opponent just gacked out a hand. Okay.
destroy the big one. So let's see, I have one, two, three, four, seven mana, seven, seven, seven. You know, I, I feel like I can afford to take some damage here, right? I think just being the circus of value seems nice. Seems nice, seems nice. But I was uh, I was watching the Viper this morning, um, and I'd just been watching Viper for so long, I was like, dude, I gotta sub and do some gift subs for backlog purposes. And uh, so I'm very I'm very flattered that the Viper has come and hosted us today. Thank you, thank you a lot, Viper. Viper says, gotta head off now, enjoy the stream, dude. It was cool to have you drop by earlier. You're a legend. Oh, 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 the Viper! Oh my goodness! <laughs> I love, that's that feels really good. With you being someone who's really good at shit. <laughs> like God. AWE 2 is like legit so hard to manage. There's just so much there's just so many things. What's happening in this game, man? So I think I want to yeah, just chuck back the seafloor stalker. And then I have enough up for an anti-cognition. The villain is pretty starved for land, so this means that we can probably just... I'm going to send back the more expensive one that could threaten me at all. Send that guy home. So, I mean, if, if villain replays it, we can't counter it. But if villain decides to do something bigger and juicier... Vivictus Games says, have you seen the newsroom on HBO? If so, what was your opinion on it? I'm going to spoil the entire series. If any of you want to watch the newsroom, cover your ears. I'm going to hold my hands up this while I talk about it, and then we pull down and it's safe. Okay, get ready. Cover your ears. I hated the newsroom because it was, each season had an arc to it. Each season had an arc to it that built up in drama, and at the end of each season, all the characters just shrug their shoulders and were like, actually, that wasn't a big deal. Like, there was a whole... There was literally an entire season that was like, Oh my god, are we gonna get arrested or indicted? And at the end of the season, they were like, Nah! And not even like, Ooh, we escaped the lawsuit. It was just like the owner was like, Dude, I'm not gonna fire you guys. And that was it. And I was like, what the hell? Alright, so I'm gonna end it. So I really hated that specific thing that they did with the plots. Finite Hate Machine says, you don't watch the newsroom for the story, you watch it for the snappy dialogue. Aaron Sorkin writes snappy dialogue that is propped up by nearly deceased plot points. <laughs> but, but these plot points, they're not even responding. It's okay. It's alright. Just keep trying to pump a little bit of life out of them. Surprise! Hey, I ranked up in the mode I don't play enough. Yeah, I mean it's I mean like literally like like if if the plot is the dead pharaoh and the dialogue is all the gold that they bury it with, then every pyramid contains an Aaron Sorkin movie, okay? Or TV show. <laughs> Anytime you see an adorned mummy, be like, Aaron Sorkin does have really great dialogue. <laughs> Luke Rakal's the casualness of your savagery is legendary, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pooped on. Well, this is a hand. This is a hand. We have the Glacial Grasp to continue to cycle. Villain goes first, which is fine. Oh, fart and crap crud. Alright, well. Anytime someone plays a one drop when I, like, don't really have anything. Ooh, and the aggro colors. Okay. Okay. Pass the turn. Pass the turn. Pass the turn. Alright, well, it's time to glacially grasp. 
everything that my opponent doth do. I mean, we can get the Ardent Electromancer into Thundering Rebuke if we peel a red, which is pretty good. Go start. Phoebe says, hey, uh, when did Sean play SimCity? I played it on release day, as a matter of factoid. Play on release day. I, I tried to uh, do a... Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my goodness. Yes, please, please. Get Their City. That's right. Get Their City was the name. SimCity was really bad. SimCity was a really bad uh, implementation. All right. Mm, tap. We wish to find a mountain. If we don't, then rats. Ugh. All right. Field research. Let's go. Mountain, mountain. I know they're in here somewhere. Probably this guy. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Shit. We're, go we're gonna need that mountain. You know what? I, I want to die. I want. I, I want. I want it to be swift. Ah, crap. Okay, I lost. <laughs> yeah, like city skyline is amazing. Pori says, "Did you ever uh, get to play Tooth and Tail? Cute, simplified RTS with French revolutionary animals." You know, I watched gameplay footage of it. I never wound up playing it. I really should. Really, I should. I'm also interested to check out uh, Iron Harvest. Iron Harvest. Looper Call uh, is asking about another week-long uh, playthrough of a game like I did for Dark Souls Remaster. Yeah, I really want to. I really want to do that again. I've been feeling a little bit withdrawn this year. The last one that we did was Factorio, which was terrific, 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 terrific. I mean, we always go second, and we have two on the draw with a Relic Amulet and a Cycling Card, which is... Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Oh! Oh, yeah! Black Red, huh? Grotag Bug Catching Guy, huh? All right, well, let's do this. Double Relic Amulet, too much? Depends on what Meister Mats Matsuki does. But yeah, SimCity, the EA SimCity was like, I, I mean, it was just, it hurt how bad it was. It like had an extremely limited amount of space, like far less space than you would encounter. All right, well, I mean, that sort of makes our decision for us. We are going to play the Fisher Wizard and we are going to tap like this because we could draw a spike field hazard. And we don't, and that's okay. So th this guy's gonna hurt a bit, but I mean, post land drop, I just like blow blow his booty up, blow up his booty. Yeah, I mean it was like small area. It wasn't optimized properly. It oh, it just it was a stinker, man. Oh, terrific! Because I would rather have this chump on this. land is the nuts here. Oh, shit. Foiled by land. I think we just plop down the cunning geyser mage. Villain is Rakdos, which has a hard time playing more than one land at a time. So, in this circumstance, what I can do is I can block here and trade here, right? This can eat this. Trample, trample sucks, for sure. Uh-huh. 
could be it could be some sort of buff. Subtle strike would be a blowout. Oh, great. You love to see it. Okay. Oh that that is not it. I think I'm going to want to royal something. My villain is, villain is working us here, man. Okay. Let's go to one. Like it's, like it's not a problem, you know? All right. Going to one. Having fun. Alright, is there a way to do this? No. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Alright, shoot her. Um. Oh man, dude, we just we were we were a turn late on the Lando. Damn it, damn it, damn it. 